Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. It's um, 5.30 in the morning here, November the, the 5th. Glad to be here Monday morning. Uh, just praising God, you know, for this opportunity, right? I'm, I'm happy to be able to do these shows. This is stuff that I'm studying, working through my certification for NANC NANC um, certification, uh, National Association for Deuthetic Counselors, uh, all Bible-based counseling, and this is what um, I feel like the Lord has wanted me to do, and so I just wanted to share some of what I'm learning and what I'm studying, um, working through my certification and whatnot. So, you know, I hope it helps someone else out there, too. Um, last week, we left off on a section. We're looking at Adam Pulaski's Biblical Counseling Manual. This is a manual that's online. You can grab it. It's a PDF. Just by typing in Biblical Counseling Manual, Adam Pulaski, P U L. ASKI, or you can get this off of emmanuels.org, emmanuels, uh, I M M A N U A L S, emmanuels.org. And um, it's a great, it's 389 pages, so it's a large PDF, but there's a lot of great information on here, and uh, some of it I agree with, some of it I don't. But it's uh, Adam Pulaski and Steve Wynn, copyright 2004, and they uh, brought together a bunch of information um, they collected while they were studying biblical counseling and that they found very helpful to explain the process, right? So I find it very helpful too. So we looked at last week four stages of spiritual development, the born-again stage, Adam Pulaski talking about the born-again stage, <clears throat> spiritual stage. Number three, the pathway of the cross stage and ascension, overcomer, spiritual war- war- well, warfare stage. So we looked at that and the characteristics of an overcomer and um working out your salvation and they have on these uh, on this PDF they have uh, kind of like homework you can do uh, memory verses uh devotions put off put on uh for like uh, you can grab the form really from evangelist.org but worksheets and stuff um victory over sin worksheet and things like that and uh, yeah it's quite uh, it's quite good for people who are you know even for like myself, who I'm on a you know a self uh, a self discipline sort of a self confrontation journey, right? Um, so I haven't done a lot of like homework and stuff because I'm so busy, but that, that's very helpful for people. I know that's helped me out in the past. We're looking at uh, 34, page 34, why there is hope. That's the next section. And Adam Plasky says, "Your hope in the midst of trials." Number one, those in Christ are freed from the power and penalty of sin. Number two, God will not allow believers to be tested or tempted beyond what they can bear. Number three, our Lord Jesus Christ will grant mercy and provide grace to help in every need. Number four, trials and testings will develop and mature you in Christ. Number five, God's peace and joy are available to believers. And number six, only God can change people. Number seven, when you confess your sins, God forgives and cleanses you. And then, uh, so that's the section that we'll go through and look at those. It's got a lot of scripture reference, not a whole lot of, um, you know, writing or anything from Adam Pulaski. There's a little bit here. He says, those in Christ are freed from the power and penalty of sin. And he gives references, uh, scripture references, Romans 6, 3 through 7, uh, and then uh, 14, 18, and 23. So really the sixth chapter of Romans. The past is dealt with once and forever. To listen to the past is to listen to demons and to dishonor the blood of Christ. And he quotes uh, Hebrews 10:10 10, 10 and uh, Hebrews 14:20 20 through 22. We are we are to give our time and effort to the present. And I believe that, I mean, that would be the most honoring and pleasing thing to God for sure. Um, whether people can do it or not, I mean, and like we can do all things through Christ, who, you know, through Christ who strengthens us, right? That's that's what I believe. And I think that the reason, uh, I believe that some of us might look back, you know, not everybody, but some people I know that I did, and I wanted to, I wanted to understand, really, just what happened and, and really get a good grip on what happened to, in my past, right? So I would have been more pleasing to God and more honoring to God had I just... Uh, not done that, and I believe that. But the thing is, is, I felt that I needed to do it, so I don't believe that I'm under any condemnation because I don't believe that once you're born again, I'm born again, that there is no no longer any condemnation. 
um, I believe that God has slowly, over the last five years, been working at, at a pace that I could handle to show me the path to to mercy, to compassion, to to love. You know, I mean, love entered my heart. Like when I was born again, the moment I was born again, you know, I could tell that the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, was entering and into my whole being, and darkness was leaving. <laughs> Praise God. But the thing is, is I chose kind of to hang on to my past in order to work through it in in a way that I that I thought it was okay. You know what I mean? So I don't believe that I'm under any condemnation. I really don't. I, I think our God is a loving God and He cares. And I believe that you know there was times when I was doing blog talk radio shows here because I've done almost 900. This was a couple of years ago that I was almost really done talking about my past, you know, some different periods through the stages of doing all these shows. And I really felt a, a, a leading from the Holy Spirit to not to not do that, to actually keep talking. And so I believe, like, this is part of my ministry. And I was yesterday walking around the, the apartment here, just sort of hanging out and doing some studies. I'm busy studying all the time. And... In between studies, I was doing some other things like housework and stuff, right? <laughs> Trying to clean the place up and doing different things and cooking supper and going to the store. So I was well, meandering around the apartment yesterday at some point, and I felt the Lord say, you know, in my spirit, with my spiritual ears, you know, I, I got this word really, the, hurt, the hurting and the lost. You know, the people that are hurting, the people that are wounded. That, that's really where my ministry is. And, that, and, and God God, is, God knows all things. And he, he, he knows that when people who have been hurt and who have been so, you know, down and really at the depths of, of despair, understand what it's like for somebody else to, to be there or to have been there. So in there's you know I believe the saying you know that God brings all things together for good. So even though this horrible stuff happens to people, we can choose to turn it around for good through the you know with the help of God. And I believe that that's really that's what He's been doing in my life for five years. Right? Praise God. So number two, Adam Pulaski says God will not allow believers to be tested or tempted beyond what they can bear. He gives his grace and, and strength to endure every test and resist every temptation so that you never have to sin. Uh, Romans 8, 8, 35, 39, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he quotes uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 10, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, Philippians uh, 4, 13, Hebrews 4, 15 through 16, 2 Peter 2, verses 4 through 9. He gives his grace and strength to endure every test and resist every temptation so that you never have to sin. Well, we know we're going to sin. And, you know, there's a lot of people, well, I shouldn't just say people, there's a lot of Christians out there who walk around thinking that once they're born again, that that uh, they're perfect. It's kind of a joke, really. It's like, you know what, think about the one, think about every day in traffic, every day at work, every day within your home, something's going to happen that's going to cause your heart to to think something that you shouldn't be thinking. There's a lot of people out there that like to pretend that they're not capable of that sort of behavior anymore because they're born again, and actually they're wrong because there's not one of us, not one of us who doesn't have to repent at the end of the day for some for something, you know, because you know what, we're not Jesus. We're not perfect, and we never will be. We're not God. We never will be. That's Satan who thought he could be like God. You know, Satan's the one who thought, you know, he could be like the Most High and have his throne up there where the Most High is, and that he could be the Most High. Satan's the one who thought he could be God, and he was mistaken, and he's headed straight for the pits of hell. And, you know, like the rest of us, we're supposed to try we're supposed to try on a daily basis, every day, to walk the walk that Jesus would put before us, which is to to love God first place in our hearts and our lives, make God our first place, number one, and, you know, love our neighbor as ourselves and help those who need help, you know, and do as good. You know, works don't get you anywhere, but it's the fruit. Works are just the fruit of of, of the Holy Spirit moving in, in our lives. And the changed heart, 
not about material things. If anybody thinks this is about material things, they're false. They're wrong. There's nothing to do with material goods. The only thing it does have to do is if your neighbor is cold, give him a coat. I mean, that's it. But, but we're talking about what's the motivation behind that when you give somebody their uh, your coat because they're cold. It's because you care about them. You have compassion in your heart. They may not be your best friend, and you may not even know them, but you care about them because that's that's our fellow brother or sister who needs help, you know. So if you can give a coat, give a coat. But those good works are not going to save you. They're not going to get anybody into heaven, right? Uh, but there's a lot of people out there that think that they will, and they're falsely false. false they're, they're, they're believing a different gospel. But the thing is, we're not going to ever run into a situation where we're not going to sin. We're, 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 people sin all the time. Anytime you have a derogatory thought in your head, we're sinning because we can't be God. But what we can do is train, 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 allowing the Holy Spirit to show us how to think, how to how to how to keep our heart right with God. Because if we keep our heart right with God, then we're not going to be we're really we have less opportunity to sin, which is to 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 do the opposite of what God is and and, and what God wants. We're not gonna we're not gonna think horrible thoughts about somebody else. I mean, it, you just look around, take a look around. I mean, you know, there's there's every situation could come up in the world that cause people to have something going on in their heart that shouldn't be there. It's from the devil, not from God. And so it's really important to allow the Holy Spirit and the Word of God every day to uh, train. You know, and that's what their, the apostles were always talking about, you know, the teaching and the training of righteousness, of God's righteousness, not ours. We're not righteous. We have... Righteousness through Jesus Christ, praise God, his righteousness, not ours. And so we need to allow God's word to transform us. And that's what the whole thing is about. Number three, our Lord Jesus Christ will grant mercy and provide grace to help in every need. He constantly intercedes as an advocate for you to God the Father and fully understands your weaknesses. Quoting Hebrews 2.18, Hebrews 4.15-16, Hebrews 7.25, Romans 5.10 and John 20.23, 20, he says, Don't defend self when treated unfairly or suffering injustice, injustices. As your advocate, let Jesus handle evil done to you on earth. Our job is to love our enemies, do good to those who persecute you, to express goodwill to them, put them in the hands of God, pray that they may receive spiritual blessings in Christ. Now, this is something that I'm learning how to do over the period of time. I've only been born again five years. And... Uh, it takes time to do this stuff because uh, immediately my old nature, you know, the old glory wants to handle things and think things that she used to think before she was born again. You know, the things that I used to to think are, I remember what I used to think. Thank God remembers it no more. You know, thank God that God remembers it no more. He said, I remember no, you know, I don't remember your sin anymore. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But the thing is, is um, I, I'm try, it's still a, a walk that has to be a daily thing where, you know, I, I, don't, I remember what God wants me to think and how God wants me to feel and, and how, how to handle things. So, you know, the old way of my thinking would be, you know, def- definitely don't love your enemies. <laughs> you, know? <clears throat> you know, but who, who, people who are not born again don't realize that that's that's... That's a commandment from Jesus, praise God, you know. And you know what? If everybody was doing that, this world would be such a better place because it would eventually weed out those evil people. But, was, yeah, because they wouldn't be able to, to do so much damage if everybody was not repaying evil with evil, right? So, you know, the, the whole idea is to, to love those that, 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 that have hurt us and to forgive them and to pray for them and to do you know to help people regardless of who they are not just helping our christian fellow brother or sister who needs a hand that would be the same as jesus coming uh, you know and spending time with us here as he did in the flesh praise god thank you lord and uh, only helping those who are righteous so he would have been hanging around then with the pharisees and the sadducees and he would have been like well, look at these guys. They study the Bible. Look how great they are. They, they, you know, they say long prayers in public, and they're just so righteous and holier than thou. You know, that's the, the, if that was the case, then that's who Jesus would have come and hung around with. But no, he was hanging around with people who needed him, people who needed a savior, people who needed 
hope in their lives. You know, people like, you know, people who are downcast in society. He was hanging out with the with the prostitutes and the publicans and the people who were looked down upon. And that that's who he was hanging out with. So, you know, really it it is the it is the body of Christ's job here to allow, you know, God to work through us to help those who need the Lord in their lives and who need hope and who need help and who need a hand up, you know. And that's what that's what Jesus said. You go out into all the world and you preach the gospel. You you heal the sick, you free the oppressed, praise God in my name. And that's the thing. How are you gonna do that if you're just hanging around with people that are holier than thou? <laughs> you know. You know, so I, I, that's why, I mean, some of this, I, I see a lot of stuff going on in the different churches that I've been to, and I'm like, you know, I uh, I just can't get into it. It's not something that I want to be a part of, that, you know, that holier-than-thou soul righteous club that speaks in a different tone of voice whenever they're at church. And, you know, it's kind of weird. Like, you know, they're just not real, right? I mean, there's just nothing so kind of disgraceful, really. Number four, trials and testings will develop and mature you in Christ if you respond to them in God's way. Romans 5, 3-5, James 1, uh, 2-4. He never devises evil or harm for you, rather his plans for you are for good. And there's different thoughts. It depends on your theology and where, where, you, where you base your theology from. You know, there's a lot of different teachings out there on whether or not God uh, is behind evil, you know, or actually created evil. Well, did he create evil? Did he not create evil? Did evil just happen? Or it depends. There's a lot of different theologies out there about that. And uh, I believe that God is in control and God created all things, right? Because that's what it says in the Bible. And I also believe that when he... I'm starting to, to think about a little bit more about the theology that says that when God created the heavens and the earth and, you know, all all that are in them, you know, at the end of the... At the end of the six days there, on the seventh day, you know, he he said, oh, it, it is good. He's very good. And so I believe that God um, knew, obviously, there's going to be problems because the devil had already opposed God. The Satan had already come up against God and been you know, took, uh, you know, however many angels with him. Does the Bible say two-thirds or something or a third or whatever? There, quite a few angels followed him. Uh, in his rebellion against God, and so they were cast down to the earth. And um, so God knew about this, obviously, right? But the thing is, is I don't. I, I believe that God knows all things. From it says in the Bible that God knew, knew all things from the you know from the end from the beginning because He saw all things, right? So He knew man was going to fall. So He He knew He was going to have to to have a Savior come in, and He knew exactly when. Praise God! Thank you, Jesus! Hallelujah! But anyway, so, you know, this, this, like Adam Pulaski says, you know, he never advises evil or harm for you. There's a whole theology out there that says that God is behind a lot of it, or all of it. And the thing is, is, I mean, in Job, you know, they're talking about that um, in the book of Job, that God said, you know, who created uh, all things, including evil? You know, and if God chooses to bring evil against someone, which then he will, and he would. And, you know, so... There's different theologies, depends on what you believe personally and what your preconceived notions are about the Bible and about God. But I just choose to believe that God is good. And uh, this is just because the whole Bible is full of examples of God's goodness and mercy and grace. And I also believe that uh, Jesus Christ, I mean, praise God, he's God in the flesh, right? And just by the, just by knowing from the Gospels and from from the New Testament, and while in the he shows up, he's, he's very visible in the Old Testament as well. But uh, that you know, God is 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 good by nature, and so I believe the tests and trials will come, and I believe that it is really a test to see who we're going to follow. Are we going to follow God, or are we going to follow the devil? Are we going to do God's work and God's will, or are we going to do the devil's work? Are we going to serve Satan? And just like every one of us has a choice, you know, every day to do that. And um, we have to decide wh- who we're going to serve at the, you know, at, at the start of each day. And this is the thing. Am I going to do the devil's work or am I going to do God's work? So if I'm going to do God's work, then it's going to have to be uh, with love in my heart. So every action will have to be based on compassion and mercy, care, concern, love, and prayer, and, you know, really 
spreading the message of, of God's love and God's mercy and compassion to, to others through my daily walk. If I want to serve Satan, then I can just continue to live the old way that I was living before I was born again. So these are our choices to make. Sadly enough, uh, but hey, God gave us a choice, and he did in the Garden of Eden, and man fell. Man chose to serve Satan and has continually ever since. And so it's important, you know, like being born again, uh, to not do the devil's work and to serve God alone. To not serve two masters, just like Jesus said. Serve one or the other. And, you know, I just have seen God's goodness and mercy in my life, and I've seen it in other people's lives. I've seen the, the, the fruit of the Spirit, you know, working in other people's lives. And it's 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 awesome. Praise God. So, yeah, I believe God is good. So God's peace and joy are available to believers regardless of others' possessions or circumstances. Uh, follow God's will, His word, which is His righteousness, and the kingdom of God is yours to proclaim. We reign in life through righteousness. So, yeah, God's peace and joy are available to believers regardless of others' possessions or circumstances. Oh, regardless of others, comma, possessions or circumstances. Yeah, that's true because it doesn't matter what's going on in this world. This is like the Apostle Paul, you know, sitting in that prison in um, Philippi and, you know, the, you know, singing, uh, you know, praises to, to God, singing hymns and songs to God and uh, praising God while he's in stocks after being beaten. And uh, that that's a good lesson for all of us, really. Um, you know, he was, you know, Paul was, uh, the Apostle Paul was, really wounded quite often while he was out preaching the gospel. And um, he just kept praising God. And he kept, you know, he kept just, kept going. Um, that's that's the peace and joy of God. So really, regardless of what happens in this life, you know, this is the only, as far as I'm concerned, and what I can see, uh, the only true peace, really. Um, because there's never going to be peace on this earth, as we know, you know. But joy, I'm still working on finding that joy, but I think it's an inward thing that has to come um, spiritually through the Holy, you know, with the Holy Spirit, really by the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I believe that will happen eventually. Number six, only God can change people. You, you, he says, you cannot and are not responsible for changing others. You are accountable to God solely for your own deeds, especially verse 20, um, talking about Matthew 16, 20, 16 27, Romans 2, 5 through 10, Colossians 3, uh, 23, 25, 1 Peter 1, 17. So it says, and are to do your part of in living at peace with others. So only God can change people. You cannot and are not responsible for changing others. And you are accountable to God solely for your own deeds and are to do your part in living at peace with others. So that's true because um, that's, the, that's just like the message of the gospel. I mean, the gospel, God's word is what changes people. It's not the person who's out there preaching. So it's not the preacher. It never was. It's not the prophet. Like, you know, back in the you know, back in the Old Testament, good examples of that. It's not the prophet. The words and, and the and the writing, you know, that, that God gave to them to speak, you know. And it's just like the, the preachers today and the and the pastors and uh, you know, the missionary people and different people out there preaching the gospel. You know, it's not them at all. It's it's God's word. It's the it's the message it's the gospel message that changes people's lives. Right? All we really require to do is go out there and share the message, right? And let God do the work. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it says, when you confess your sins, God forgives and cleanses you. It says, our job is to honor the blood of Jesus by acting and proclaiming ourselves forgiven by his great sacrifice for us. To act guilty, condemned, or self-pitying is to make the cross ineffective. Uh, self-pity is negative pride, worshiping the devil. And... Uh, so I believe that, you know, that's true. It says in the Bible, confess your sins, God forgives you and, and cleanses you, right? Well, I, I believe that. And I mean, you just keep on, you just keep on repenting. I mean, if we sin, we repent, turn around, go the other way. You know, um, go go towards God. <laughs> hey, Amen. Don't run from him, man. Run to him. And um, this is the thing. It's, uh, you know, we're, as far as self-pitying goes and whatnot, a lot of that stuff, I believe, if someone's done that for a long, long time, for instance, like myself, um, it's it's a job to turn it around. I don't do that hardly as much as I used to, as, as far as sitting around self pity. But uh, I know when I was younger, I did a lot of that, and also as a young, like even in my twenties and thirties, and that's pretty well what 
kind of was a catalyst for uh, doing what I what, what I was doing, which was not living a life that was pleasing to God, obviously, of wanting to take my life and end my life. In other words, saying, God, you did not give me a good life, so I want out. You know, it's painful. And, you know, and, and I didn't understand these things because I wasn't born again. I, I didn't understand God's word or what, what I was supposed to do. I didn't understand God at all. And when I was born again and got into the word, I realized, you know, I was just doing the devil's work. The devil wanted to destroy me. And the devil wanted to see me destroy myself, and he was more than happy to let me do that. Um, God was sitting there on the other side saying, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> and I'm serious, <clears throat> because something always was on the other side saying, no, <laughs> do not go that way. You know what I mean? And the other side of me would be like, there would be something on the other side saying, oh, but you know you want out of this pain. You know, that's the devil. <clears throat> that's Satan. You know, he creeps in. He's very sneaky. And um, you know, I was just allowing the devil to talk me through into a whole lot of horrible stuff in my lifetime that had I known, you know, had I been born again and, and well, you know, I wouldn't have, I would have seen that, right? So Adam Plassey says, as we follow God's way, walking in his word, living by his truths, as so stated, we enter into his promises of an abundant life now here on earth as well as in eternity. And I mean abundant a lot of people think, well, there's a lot of people out there, I mean, hey, God, you know, if you're blessed financially, that's wonderful. But a lot of people think that that's what it's all about. And if that's the case, then the apostles would have just had, you know, humongous palaces. The, the apostle Paul and Peter, and the apostle John, they would have all had huge, if they were walking, because they were walking in the abundance of God, praise God, and they, they knew Jesus, praise God, at first hand and were taught by him. Talk about living the abundant life. Well, it wasn't physical. They were living an abundantly spiritual life, you know. And so a lot of people get that because people, um, especially today in this materialistic world, all of us only think of of of, of, of uh, success and abundance and, and doing well in life as materialistic. So it's like if you don't have the material goods, then obviously you're poor. But we're talking about spiritual stuff here. We're not talking about physical stuff. And so, you know, enter into his promises of an abundant life. And that's the abundant life of having uh, peace in your heart, knowing that you've been reconciled back to God, first of all, back to back to the Father, the Creator, who paid a dear price on the cross. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And um, that's the abundant life, helping people, you know, helping somebody else, putting somebody else first place, allowing somebody else um, to see the goodness of God in your own life and to see mercy and compassion and that it's that that yeah, suffering's gonna happen, trials and tribulations are gonna happen. But that they can be overcome. And so it's really important to remember that. We're not talking about physical stuff. A lot of people mistakenly um take it that way. So the next section we will look at on Wednesday is um, Effecting Biblical Change, Approach to Problems. And he talks about, Adam Plosky talks about feelings, uh, doing the root, and approach to solutions, perspective, hope, and um, change, and working out your salvation. So that's next. Uh, we'll look at that Wednesday. Thanks, everybody. Have a, a blessed day. God bless you all. Uh, I'll just keep you know everyone in my prayers and pray that God would just just allow you to see his truth and his word as 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 you know we open up our, our our hearts to him and open up our minds and our ears and our spiritual eyes to understand the truth in his word and I just pray for all those who are out there hurting and suffering that you would just open up your heart to receive love real love God's love praise God have an awesome day talk to you soon <laughs>